excited to have you here today. Today's webinar, uh, it's all about Red Hat OpenShift connectors. So um, let's get ready to be hands-on on this exercise. You will be able to try our new services, not only uh, connectors, but also Red Hat OpenShift streams for Apache Kafka, which is our managed Kafka service. Um, I'm going to share with you two links that you're gonna need as we move through um, the presentation. Here they are, and I'm just gonna get started with the agenda. So welcome everyone that's joining. So today we are gonna run to a quick product introduction. Uh, as soon as we finish that, I'll explain to you the details of the workshop, and then you're gonna have your guided lab time with my friend and colleague Bernardo Tison. Uh, and then we are ready for Q&A. So you can always copy your Q&As in the chat. So let's get started with Red Hat OpenShift connectors. Um, for those of you that are maybe new to our presentations, one of the things that Red Hat is trying to do lately is to expand its open hybrid cloud technology portfolio with a new set of managed cloud services. And these ones include platform services, application services, and platform services. And for today, what we're gonna look is into the layer of application and data services specific for Red Hat OpenShift connectors. All these services provide full stack management, unify experience and support across hybrid clouds. Everything is natively integrated and running on top of OpenShift with the goal that helps you, which is the most important part, build applications for your organization. So, um, system that Red Hat has been building in the last uh, few years, mostly in the last year, is that our goal is to support the creation and delivery of a stream-based applications that requires a robust streaming platform that can support a variety of use cases. Um, and one of the things that we have chosen is to have Red Hat OpenShift streams for Apache Kafka in the center of our product ecosystem. And even though Apache Kafka gives us a lot of the important features for streaming data, it is not, it doesn't necessarily um, serve all the functions and it cannot do it all by itself. And that's when we need to tap into the product ecosystem that is out there for Apache Kafka um, that basically provides us additional solutions and tools that help us out complete a streaming analytic solution or to complement a real time application. So among those services, we have service registry for schema discovery. We have connectors for connecting between sources and syncs, which is, which is something that we're going to talk about today. We have API designer to support the creation of APIs and schema. And of course, all of this can be done in combination with OpenShift to provide an environment for development and deployment of cloud native applications, okay? So a couple of things that we have in this ecosystem to keep in mind is that we strive to you to offer a streamlined developer experience. We try to integrate the platform with the services. We provide a shared identity management and access controls, and we provide 24-7 um, premium support with a 99.95% SLA. So what you're here today is connectors. So what is Red Hat OpenShift connectors? And these are as a fully hosted and managed pre-built connectors for Red Hat OpenShift streams for Apache Kafka that improve the time to market um, and reduces the complexity of streaming data between systems across hybrid cloud environments. Basically, right now we're offering after 60 pre-built source and sync connectors that support multiple standards. We deliver this solution as a fully managed solution, expanding the Red Hat Cloud Services offering, and it's tightly integrated with OpenShift streams for Apache Kafka. Um, here are some of the benefits or the features that we have for connectors. Uh, I don't want to deep dive in all of them because we want to spend our time using the product rather than reading a lot of the text. But basically, a couple of things to keep in mind. We offer, offer over 60, 60 pre-built connectors for some source and sync projects. They both are based on our Division project and our CamelCape project. 
Um, we also offer error handling, making sure that we can support all the errors by stopping on error, logging on the error, or sending to that letter Q. Uh, and finally, all of these, all these connectors are already pre-built. We give you a very user-friendly, code-free code -free UI that allows you to basically create your connector and deploy it, as well as updating the configurations of each one of them so you can use it without using any code, okay? Um, so how, what happens? So basically our Red Hat OpenShift Connectors product is available today on console.redhat.com. And what we are offering to you is the ability to try the service. You can self-serve, sign in into console, clink of connectors, and you are gonna be able to create a connection. Um, so you can actually stream data to and from Kafka, okay? Uh, this service or this um, solution is available for 48 hours. So you can try uh, this, you can get access to this environment for 48 hours. The only um, limitations that you have in these trials is that you can only deploy four connectors at a time. And you need to provision a Kafka instance to be able to connect the you know do the connections and be being able to stream the data and i'm sure you'll learn more about this as bernard walks you through the process it's very simple and easy so what are the details or of our workshop for today so the first thing you are gonna do is that you are or need to provision a managed kafka instance the second thing is that you're gonna be able to build and provision the connector of choice and finally, you will connect your data source to your Kafka topic. So those are the goals that we're gonna achieve in this session. What do you need to make this happen? First, you need to have a Red Hat account. And so have your credentials handy to make sure that you can deploy all these environments. So you can go to cloud.redhat.com or console.redhat.com and sign up for an account there. That will give you access to all our trials and services. Uh, you need a managed Kafka instance, as I just mentioned, you need to provision one dedicated for you, and then you need to follow the step-by-step -step instructions, which were shared on the documents that, with the links I shared at the beginning of um, the call, which I'm gonna go ahead and copy again, so you can enjoy them. That's the first one, and this is the second one. The link is this one here, if you actually prefer to write it instead of copy it from the comments, okay? This will give you access to a guide, which is the same one we send you through the email. And if you go to section four, you will find a link to the workshop step-by-step -step instructions that Bernard is gonna walk you through. So without further ado, let's get started with Bernard and our presentation for today so you can get your hands on the product. Hey, Bernard, welcome. Hey, thank you, Jennifer. So let me share my screen. Share screen. Uh, oh, 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 yes, share screen. Yes. Uh, you should see a kind of empty browser window, right? Okay. Uh, so, that's correct. Yes, I can see it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do, what Jennifer already explained it. So every detail, all the details are in this, uh, in this workshop guide, which is publicly available through, uh, through GitHub. So generally we encourage people to try to follow along as I go through the instructions. We also realize that sometimes it is difficult if you only have one screen, for instance, and, and things like that. So don't worry about this. You can redo that workshop whenever you want, okay? So uh, it's not a one-time thing, so it uh, you can you can do it with whatever you want. So basically, what I want to quickly reiterate on is the structure or the general architecture of connectors where you have a data source which will generate events. Those will be picked up by a connector, which will stream those events to a topic on OpenShift Streams for Apache uh, Kafka. And then you can have like a sync connector that will actually listen to that topic, get the events, and potentially send them to a 
to a data sink, okay? Now, we need to do a couple of things. We need to provision the Kafka instance. We need to kind of uh, do some configuration on that, and then we can start creating our connectors. So, bef so let's start with this. So I'm going to do that out of the way. So we start with going to console.redhead.com. I'm already logged in, but generally you have to log in with your Red Hat account ID. You go to application and data services, streams for Apache Kafka, Kafka instances. I don't have any Kafka instance for the moment. So that's the first thing I need to do is create a Kafka instance. So I'm going to do that. This is going to bring you to this uh, to this wizard. Well, it's only one page. Uh, and you see here the kind of uh, terms. So you get a Kafka instance for 48 hours. So after 48 hours, the instance disappeared, but then you can create another one if you want. It needs a name. So we're talking about connectors today. So I'm going to call it connectors. There is no region I can choose. It's US East anyway on AWS, single availability zone for the trials. Streaming units is for if you're a real, you have like a real uh, Kafka instance, not the trial version. So I can immediately do create instance. And this will start provisioning my instance. That should take a couple of minutes, hopefully not too long. But in the meanwhile, we can do something else. And that we need, in order to access our Kafka instance, we need a service account. So in the same menu here on the left, you see here service account. So we need to create a service account. I don't have any yet, so I can do create. I'm going to call it connectors as well. Create. And then this will give me a client ID and a secret. And it's important that you copy these to a secure location because especially the secret, you won't be able to recover that one. So I'm going to copy those. My client ID, I'm going to paste that somewhere. And I'm going to do the same with my client secret. So that I have them handy. I have copied those. So I can close that window. And now I have a service account that I will be able to use with my connectors and with my uh, Kafka instance. Let's go back to my Kafka instance. Let's see how we are doing here. We're still in progress. As I said, that might take a couple of minutes. So in the meantime, we can quickly go over what actually we're going to do today. So we're going to do two things. So we're doing this now at the moment, provisioning the Kafka instance. We already have our service account. Next step will be create the access control list for a service account. So that's the configure part here. And then we're going to do two things. We're going to do like a getting started if you want. So create a very simple source connector that will just generate messages by itself. And then we're going to have also a sync connector that is going to send that to a HTTP endpoint. So we're going to have like a very simple data pipeline with a connector that generate messages and then they end up in a HTTP sync. This is just for the getting started experience. And then we're going to do something more, more sophisticated if you want. So one of the kind of connectors that we have uh, make use of... Uh, uh, allow for change, change data capture using the very popular Debezium uh, project. So we can have a change data capture connector that will actually uh, capture a data change event from a MongoDB Atlas instance and stream that into our, uh, our Kafka instance. So that will be the second, the second part of what we're gonna do uh, this afternoon. Okay, so let's see where we are with here. Still, we should almost be there. Let me quickly refresh my screen. Sometimes it doesn't. No, it's still creating. So we will have to wait until it comes in ready state before we can continue with it and uh, define our access control list for service account.
for this uh, for this Kafka instance. So four minutes, we should we should nearly be there. So be with me. Okay, we're ready. So that means that we can start using our connector. So it took a little bit more, I think, than four minutes, which is still pretty reasonable, I think, considering that it really deploys a full-fledged Kafka broker on the cloud. So what I can do now is go here to click on my on my Kafka instance. We have a number of tabs here. The one that I'm interested here for the moment is the access, the fourth tab, where I can define access control rules for my Kafka instance. So normally the default rules should should uh, should appear now. So they are pretty restricted at the moment. So all accounts can describe my Kafka instance. They can describe consumer group, describe topics, and that's about it. We need more because obviously our connector needs to be able to produce the topics, consume from topics, and the Debezium connectors even have need the ability to create new topics. So we need to add those ACLs, the, those, uh, those privileges. If I click on Manage Access, I can select my, I could do that for all accounts, but let's do that now for my for my service account that I just created. So we just called connectors. And then I can do, I can assign permissions by clicking on the add permission drop down. And I can do that individually, but we have some what we took called task-based permissions, which will kind of uh, do several things at once. So let's start with the consume from topic. I want to consume from all topics. So that means I can put that to is, and then the name I can use star, which is a wildcard. So that means that my service account will be able to read from all topics, okay? And same with consumer groups will be able to use all consumer groups, read from all consumer groups. And then I can add a, another one that I will need that's produced to a topic. Okay, so again, we will do that for all topics. And you see here that by, uh, by setting this uh, ACL, my service account can write and create topics, okay? So that's exactly what I need. So I can do save now, and then my access control list will be updated with my privileges. So what you can see here, okay? So that's the what we needed to do on the Kafka side. If I bring my guide back, what we did, well, I didn't create a Red Hat account, but I did provision a Kafka instance and I did configure it to so that it can be used with my OpenShift connector, which consists of what you see here, uh, setting up my, uh, oh, I still need to create the topic. I should forget that. So let's do that as well. So I will need a topic for my first connector. So I can do that. I'm still here on my Kafka instance. If I click on the topics tab, you will see that I do not have a topic, so I can create a topic, and let's call that test connectors. Okay, that's the name of my topic. The rest I can leave as is. So uh, one partition is definitely fine for our, uh, for getting started, and the retention time is also fine. A week that's longer than your cluster will live anyway and unlimited retention size, so we can keep all this. The replicas is not something I can change at the moment. So if I do finish, I will have my 
topic ready to be used when I create my first connector. Okay, so that's what I need on the uh, streams for Kafka side. So now we can turn to the connectors themselves. So you have here this connectors menu and then connectors instance. If I click that, first of all, it warns me that I go to a beta environment. The, the whole connector thing is still in service preview, so it's considered still beta. So yes, I want to use the feature in beta. So that will change here the URL, but for the rest, everything will work as expected. And now I can start creating instances. So let's start with a source connector. So I have a source connector. So we have a lot of connectors. So J Jennifer already told you we have like over 60. So a lot of them have to do with, uh, with uh, cloud services, things that are provided by Amazon, uh, things that are provided by Azure. If I do Azure here, you will see uh, some Azure ser services that you can use as sinks or as sources. So AWS, there are some Google ones as well, right? And then there are also the Beeson connectors, and one of those we're going to use in a second, so you see all those as well. The one that we are going to use is actually a very simple one, and that's the data generator, which does not actually connect to a hosted service like AWS Kinesis or SQS or whatever. Uh, but it's a simple way that we can get started with connectors without having to set up or a, a cloud a cloud service first, which would definitely take us take way too much time to do that in, in the time that we have here. So the data generated connectors just generate at a uh, fixed interval very simple messages. So we can use that one. So you you if you search for data, you will find the data generator source. You can click on that one. So that will select the uh, the connector type. Then you need to create to select your Kafka instance that you want to use. So the one that you created before should already be here. So it's what's called connectors. So we're going to use this one. And then we need a namespace to actually deploy our connector. So as part of the service preview, you can create what we call a preview namespace, which is actually a namespace on a uh, OpenShift cluster that is completely managed by Red Hat, so uh, and which will stay up or available for 48 hours as well. And you can create up to four connectors in that preview namespace. So I don't have any at the moment, so I need to create a preview namespace. So you see here, they expire after 48 hours. They get like a generated name, it's not so important. So you click create. And that namespace, namespace will be provisioned. So it's actually really creating a namespace on a OpenShift cluster. So that will take a couple of seconds and then it should go to the connected state and then we can start using it. That's normally fairly quick. Yes, there you go. So uh, I can select it now. Again, it warns you that it will disappear like in 70 hours, 59 minutes. If I do next, I can now start configuring my connector. So to configure a connector, there are a number of things that you will always have to do. So your connector needs a name. So let's call that one data generator. Okay, it needs a service account to actually connect to your Kafka instance. So I created the service account before, as you have seen. So I can copy the client ID of my service account and the secret of my service account that I copied before. There you go. And I can continue now. And then we come to the connector specific uh, configuration, which for the data source, the data generator is fairly simple. So the data shape is not something that we can change at the moment. At the moment, so we leave that to the default. You need to tell the connector from which 
to which topic he wants to produce. So the name of my topic was test connectors. The content type, I'm going to leave that to text plain. And the content of my message, well, let's take hello world. Let's keep it simple here. So I'm going to send a hello world message in pure text format. And I'm going to do that every 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds, this connector is going to send a hello world message to my test connectors. The reason why I changed that to 10 seconds is because the HTTP sync that we're going to use, it's kind of throttled. It's a public, a public HTTP endpoint, which is throttled. So if I take the frequency like too low, too fast, you will very quickly end in throttling and your connectors, your your sync connector will go in a failed state, which I want to avoid for this example. So 10 seconds is, is fine. Okay, so I do next here. And then I can configure the error handling uh, procedure that I want to configure for my, uh, for my uh, connector. So we, you can actually choose between three. You can do, you can log if there are errors. But when you use a preview namespace at the moment, you don't have access to the log, so it's not very useful in the as a, in the service preview state because, as I said, you can't see the log. So you can stop the connector in case he encounters errors, or you can uh, set up a dead letter queue that uh, and so messages that generate errors will end up in the dead letter queue. But that would need for me to create another topic on my stream for Kafka, which I'm not gonna do at the moment. So I am just gonna choose the stop options, which is also the default. So if I have misconfigured my connector from one reason or another, it will just stop, okay? And then I can do next. And then you see here the uh, an overview of what I configured and I can now do create connector. There we go. And now my connector is being deployed in my preview namespace. So this will take also a couple of seconds. Generally, it's pretty fast. So it needs, once it's in the ready state, it will start in this case. Oh, there we are already. So now I expect my connector to start generating messages at the interval that I specified, and that is every 10 seconds. Now, it would be fine if we can easily verify that, and we can easily verify that. So if we go back here to my Kafka, my Kafka instance here, OK, I go to connectors, I go to Topics, I have my test connectors topic. If I click on that one, I can see here the step messages, and this will show me the messages that are being produced or that actually are produced in that topic. So if I click that, I expect to see, oh, yes, well, whoa, my screen is not very stable here. Uh, let's see if refreshing helps. To yeah. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I need to go back here. Yeah, okay. So you see here that I already have like eight, maybe already more messages. So it only shows the last 10 messages, but I can configure that. But you see here a number of messages which have the value hello world. And roughly they are being produced every 10 seconds. So we see 30 sec uh, 36, 46. 56, 06 from the next minute. So every 10 seconds, a message is being produced to my topic. So my source connector is working as expected. Okay. So now we can move to the other part of this first, this first getting started and create a sync connector to actually consume those messages and do something with it. So let's go back to connectors connectors instances and I can create a new connector so remember we can I can go up to four in in the service preview so we're still within our quota uh, I'm gonna search for the HTTP sync connector which is actually gonna 
produce, uh, consume from my topic and call a HTTP endpoint for every messages, every message it encounters in my topic. Okay, so I select this one. I still obviously will use my same Kafka instance. I will use my same namespace. And now I need to do my initial configuration. So I will give it another name. I will reuse the same serves, serves account, but you could potentially use another one. So you, you can have, I believe, up to 50 serves accounts per organization. So if you want to be a little bit more sophisticated, you can have serves accounts for very specific purposes. But here, I'm going to reuse the one that I configured. And then I need, obviously, now to create my connector. And the most important thing here, well, there are two important things. I'm going to start with this. So I'm going to consume from, from the test connectors. And now I need the URL for my HTTP endpoint. And for that, I'm going to switch tabs here. I'm going to use a free service that you can find if you go to the website that is called webhook.site. Right, you will receive a unique URL that will actually act as a HTTP endpoint. Okay, so we can use that one to actually send our, our messages to. So if I copy that unique URL, okay, and I go back to my connector and I post it here, okay. And I click next. Again, error handling. I will keep it to stop. <coughs> Go next. I can review everything here, but pretty sure everything looks okay. So I can create my connector. This one obviously needs to be deployed as well. And take a couple of seconds. Okay, okay, there we go. My HTTP sync is in ready state. So ready also means that it's at least working as expected until now. Otherwise it would go in error state and I would have probably to fix my configuration, but ready means everything's okay. So what I actually do expect is that I receive messages in my HTTP endpoint and indeed, so you don't see all my previous messages because the connector set up that it starts consuming from the last available uh, uh, message in the topic since it was created. But once this is, once the connector is running, you will see every 10 seconds that I have a message with the hello world content. So my very simple data pipeline is new, is now complete. So I have a source connector that produces messages to my Kafka instance. I have a sync connector that consumes those messages and sends that to an HTTP endpoint, which just echoes uh, the, the, re, the, the request. So not very useful in real life, I would say, but let's say good enough to actually demonstrate a very simple end-to-end -end pipeline using uh, OpenShift connectors and Kafka streams. So this is just going to continue for until I stopped those connectors. So uh, that was the first thing I wanted to, uh, to show, okay? So we still have plenty of time. So now let's do something more interesting maybe, or at least something more different. And the next thing I wanna do or show you is how you can do change data capture with our connectors. So change, change data capture is a uh, is a technology through which you can capture changes in a database, stream those as events, and have other systems uh, consume those changes. And then typical use cases for this is data re replication between data sources or in microservices uh, architecture, building local views of 
data services or of database that are owned by a, part, a particular uh, mi microservice, et cetera, et cetera. So we have, and let's me go back to connectors. So some of our connectors are built upon Debezium and allow to actually do this, uh, this change data capture thing. So what I'm going to do here is actually set up a change data capture connector to a MongoDB Atlas da da database. Before I do that, and that's probably something I've, I have done it already. So if you don't, it will be a bit hard to actually follow with me along and doing all the things, but you can do that afterwards. I, so when you can sign up with uh, MongoDB, so if you go to Cloud MongoDB, you can log in, or if you have already an account, you can sign in. Uh, you can log in. If you don't, you can sign in with, for instance, a Google account or create an account on Mongo, uh, on Mongo Atlas, and then you can create a database. Uh, they have a free tier, so no strings attached. You don't you even don't have to give a credit card number. You get you get like a free shared data database with limitations obviously but good enough for let's say a getting started experience for what you want to show here i have already done that so i have my database deployed so it's running on on the cloud a cloud managed by mongo the important thing if you want to do it again is the uh, you want to do it as well there are two things is network access you have to make sure that your MongoDB instance is accessible from everywhere because you actually don't know the IP address on which your connector is running. So uh, you need to be able to connect from everywhere. So that means setting a access policy for 0 .0 .0 slash 0, which is like everything. Once you have done this, this quick start, you might want to delete that rule if you don't want to expose your MongoDB to the whole world. And also, you probably you need a database user. So those steps are explained in the detailed guide. So I have like a user, so with a with a uh, with a password, because this is what my Debezium connector will need to actually connect to my to my MongoDB. Okay, so I have set that up uh, so that I can I can use that. Okay, so let's go back to my connectors and let's get started here. So create connectors instance. So now I want to do something with Mongo. So if I search for Mongo, we will see a number of connectors. Uh, we have actually two versions of the division Mongo one, an older one that should disappear fairly quickly at the next rollout but we obviously gonna use the latest version here. So that's a Debezium source connector that with which we will be able to, to change the data capture to my Mongo da database. I'm gonna select that one. Same thing here, select my Kafka cluster, select my preview namespace. Okay, let's call that one Mongo Atlas. Same kind ID and secret, and I used before. Okay, good. And now some connector specific information. So there are a number of things that we need here. So uh, we need the hosts of my. Mongo, we need a namespace. Now, we, I know that namespace is a word that you see everywhere. In this context, namespace is actually a alias for my Mongo instance, and then the username and the password with which I can connect to my MongoDB. So the hosts, something that I can find as part of my, uh, if I go back to my Mongo here, I click here on cluster zero, you will see like three links. Okay, so because my MongoDB is actually a, uh, Mongo has a notion of shards, so I have like three shards. And uh, actually the host is a concatenation of those three shards. So if, if I click on the first one, you will see this is actually one host address. 
and my two other shards they have uh, the same one well not exactly the same one so they will have another shard number here so i need the three of those and uh concatenated uh, so separated by commas so i've prepared that already here so let me let me paste uh, paste that here so my hosts is actually a concatenation of my three shards okay shard number two shard number one shard number zero i need a namespace let's call that let's call that uh mongo atlas and i'm gonna give it movies because we're gonna use movies to actually uh, create a connection on my mongodb and do change uh da data capture on that collection and then i need the user which i created previously on my mongo so that my user is this and my password i'm gonna paste that here this one and then very important don't forget it if you use like this uh hosted mongo this uses ssl to connect to mongodb so you have to have this SSL connection enabled or things will not work as expected, okay? So host, um, a unique name here, username, password, and the enable SSL. And then I can, I can uh, basically filter. So one MongoDB can have, Mongo has not the notion of tables. It rather has a notion of databases and collections. So you can filter on collections. So basically include or exclude collections that you want to include in your change data capture. So I can do that here. For instance, I'm going to have a collection code called MoviesDB. It will contain data about movies. And then in that, in that collection, in that database, I will have a collection movies. And that's actually the one I'm interested in. So uh, I think you I could do just a collection and that would work, would work as well. But let's say that I filter on the database movies DB and I filter on the movies collection in that DB. I have include here already selected. So I can now apply that filter. So that means I'm, I'm gonna only watch that particular collection. Okay, I can do next now. Here, that's like more advanced properties which generally are just here for informational purposes. You, you rarely have to change those things. So you can just click next. And then you come to the overview screen where you see your uh, connected instance, the Mongo thing, and then uh, the Mongo specific uh, information. So now I can do create connector and this will create my Mongo connector. Now, this will take a little bit more time to get in ready state, and the reason is fairly simple. So most of the connectors that we use or that you can use with OGF connectors are based on Camel K, which is itself based on the Camel integration framework, but the Debesium connectors are actually connectors that run on Kafka Connect. So when we deploy a, uh, a Debesium connector under the hood, there is first a Kafka Connect instance that needs to be deployed, and on top of that, the proper connector. So that takes a little bit more time. That should still be fairly quick. In the meantime, one thing that we can see to potentially see the progress that we make here is that Kafka Connect needs a number of topics to maintain its internal state. So that's why that's one of the reasons we needed create topic privileges for my service account. So if I go to my stream share Apache Kafka and my Kafka instance, and then I go to my topics. Okay, they're already being created. So you see here like three additional topics those were created by the Kafka Connect on which my Debesium connector will be deployed. So uh, and normally, if everything goes okay, you should be able to see like a couple of messages here. 
So yeah, so in the status one, in case you're interested, if you see like one that says running, so that probably means that my connector is running as expected. So let's see if that's correct. Indeed, my Mongo Atlas connector is now running and is monitoring my movies DB movies collection on Mongo, which does not exist yet. So we need to create that one. Okay, so I'm going back to my Mongo database. If I go here to here, you will see something a tab called collections. And it says you don't have any collections. So I can load the sample data set, so provided by Mongo itself, but that's a pretty extensive day, data set, so that will, would take too long. So we can create our own data. So I'm going to create a database called MoviesDB, which matches the name that I configured on my connector, and a collection called Movies, right? So which also... Uh, matches the name I created for my filter on my connector. So if I create that, I will have a empty collection. So now we can insert documents in it. So uh, Mongo has like the notion, doesn't talk about rows and columns and stuff like that, but has a notion of documents, which are typically kind of JSON structures. So there are different ways to add documents into a collection. For the sake of simplicity, we can do it through the MongoDB UI, or at least the Atlas UI, which gives me kind of the wizard uh, to do that. So if I click on this first icon here with the two, with the uh, with the square, not the square, curled brackets, I can just paste a JSON structure, and I've prepared some data structures here, which describe a movie. So if I paste that one, you will see that I have a document with a title. So this is about the Mary Poppins Returns movie. So we have a title, a cast, some genres, and the year it was uh, it was released. So I can insert that one. There you go. So now I have one document in my Mongo collection. And now I expect that my Debezium connector pick that one up and created a data change event and stream that to streams for Apache Kafka. So let's see if this is actually what happened. So let's go back to my streams for Apache Kafka, Kafka instances, my connectors instances. I have a new topic here that was created by my connector, which is called you know the name the name of my uh, my MongoDB namespace of so Mongo Atlas movies name of my database name of my collection so that's the name of the topic that my connector generated and i expect one message in there and hooray i've got a message and that message if i look here at the contents has like a number of things it's so basically, this is what we call a change event. Uh, well, maybe I can copy that. I will put that into a text document so that it becomes a little bit more visible. Okay. So if you see my screen here, so you have like a number of things here. So you have an after state. So that's actually the state of my document. So you will see here the title, Mary Poppins, the year, the cast, etc., etc. Number of other more metadata around my source. And then also very important here, the op stands for operation. And the op is a C. So that means create. So actually that change event describes a create operation. I created a new document in my Mongo database that was captured by my connector. And the whole change event is now streamed into my Kafka topic. OK, so if I create another one, I have prepared some of those here up front. Okay, Let's go back to my Mongo. 
insert the document. It's another movie, it's Aquaman. Let's insert that. Okay, and I have a third one. Which is the mule. A nice, uh, a nice Clint Eastwood movie. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. what am I doing here? Okay, so I insert that one as well. So I have now three documents. I expect three messages in my topic. So if I refresh that thing, indeed, I have three and all of them. Let's look at the last one. You see the operation is still C, create. Okay, now I can change a document in my Mongo. So let's do that. So one of the things I always wanted in is play in a movie. So let's, because I can't really do that, I can add myself to the cost of one. Okay, so I can add a array element to cost and I will add myself to it. Okay, so I added myself to the cast. I can update my document. There you go. So that would normally, I hope, have generated another message in my topic. Yes, indeed, that's this one. So it's still about the mule. But the things now that you see, the operation is U for update, because I updated an existing document. And you see here that I'm part of the cost now. OK, so because that's the change that I did. So, uh, so you can add documents, change documents, delete documents if you want. This will all be captured by your connector streamed into a topic on Streams for Apache Kafka. Uh, Stream for Apache Kafka. And obviously, from there, you would typically consume those change events and do something useful with it, maybe update another system or whatever. So uh, I'm about to register a video where I actually have like a full pipeline where those change events are consumed by AWS Kinesis service, trigger a Lambda, and then update an Elasticsearch index. So uh, stay tuned. So when for when I release, I release that video will be over the next couple of days. So that gives them, but that would bring us too far to do it here. But so what you see here is just the first part. You you consume, change events, and then obviously you want to do something useful with it. Okay, and that kind of concludes the workshop. We are still nicely in time. So. Uh, so just to what we did, we created source connectors, we created a sync connector, and basically demonstrated how you can consume data from data sources and then build pipelines uh, to, uh, to data syncs. All this without having to install anything on your local system. It's all running in the cloud. So you can actually build potentially very interesting functionalities uh, which are completely running in the cloud. So no infrastructure burden as far as you are concerned. Okay, so that's it as far as I'm concerned. So thank you for attending. Thank you for following along if you manage to follow along. If not, as I said, the instructions should be detailed enough to just do that at your own pace today or later when you, when you see fit. So... Uh, you can have you can create Kafka instances and connector instances uh, whenever whenever you want. So that preview service remains remains available. So that's it for me. Yeah, I wanted to show something, Bernard, just to make sure that our um, audience knows. It's just a quick key here, um, so we can close with this. Remember that you can always go. Um, Kristen, if you can, oh, thank you. Uh, remember, you can always go to console.redhat.com to try the service. This is free and available. You have 48 hours trials, 
And uh, you can practice as many times as you can. Remember, it's the same for our open shift streams for Apache Kafka. We run these webinars or we try to run these webinars on a monthly basis. Uh, on, on the YouTube channel for developers, there's a good uh, amount of recordings of us doing this over and over again for Kafka, for service registry. We have a nice case for Kafka streams on the pro on processing. So go check it out. There's a lot of information in there. You can always find those, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, um, and try to connect to us with the Dev Nation. There's a channel on Dev Nation for developers. Make sure you find us there. And thank you so much for coming. And what a wonderful job, Bernard. This looks great. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Okay, thank you.